So what they're basically saying to you, even as they deny that CRT or critical pedagogy or critical theory or any kind of critical fill in the blank is present in the schools, is they're saying that it must be present in the schools. That's, that's what they're saying between the lines. So today I want to talk about the little gotcha game people play when you try to explain that critical theory, critical pedagogy, and critical race theory specifically are being used in K-12 classrooms. They may say to you, where? Give me specific examples. Show me the specific school, classroom, teacher, lesson plan, etc., and put you on the spot to produce something that will satisfy their standards that what you're claiming is true. And if you, it doesn't include the words critical race theory or critical pedagogy or critical theory in the classroom itself, well, then it's not there. That's what they'll say, unless you can prove that it's not there. And what I find so incredible about this argument, this gotcha game, is they're demanding something while at the same time holding the very beliefs that put the lie to their denial. What do I mean by that? These are the same people who insist that we have to teach kids to be anti-racist, otherwise they'll be racist. These are the same people who say that systemic racism exists and it's everywhere. These are the same people who say that the systemic racism is upholding something called whiteness and that whiteness is the dominant culture which oppresses black and brown people and also members of the LGBTQIA plus and however many other letters are going to get added to it eventually community. And they insist they know this because there's disparity in the outcomes of members of these alleged groups. I say alleged because it's the same people demanding the proof from you who claim these groups even exist as groups, not just individuals. And since they're the ones defining the identities of these individuals, they're alleging that those individuals see themselves that way. They may, they may not, but they're saying they do. These same people playing gotcha games with you about the existence of critical theory in classrooms. So they say all these things. And they know it's true because of the disparities of outcome. And they're saying that all the efforts in the past to correct the disparities of outcome have been failures because the system itself was set up to uphold these disparities. So you've just been battling against a system that is designed to protect itself. Gosh, that sounds eerily familiar when we're talking about public education, but I digress. And so... They, they're they saying that these systems uphold a power structure that you're supposed to just accept exists along with the racist system that upholds it and that those power structures were designed intentionally always and forever to benefit exclusively white people. So the, that's what the gotcha, gotcha people are saying generally in the same breath. And I know this because if you were to isolate any of the things I just said about systemic racism existing or whiteness or white privilege or uh, power structures that uphold the white supremacy, if, if you were to ask them, do you think these things exist? They would say, yes, of course. Yes, of course. They're demanding proof from you that this stuff is in the classroom while at the same time accusing you of being in denial of reality or denial of real history if you challenge any one of those things. Furthermore, if you say you would like to pursue a colorblind society where the standard of equality is equality under the law, they say, you're the problem. You're the reason the disparities exist because what we really should be pushing for is equity, equality of outcome. So what they're basically saying to you, 
Even as they deny that CRT or critical pedagogy or critical theory or any kind of critical fill in the blank is present in the schools, is they're saying that it must be present in the schools. That's, that's what they're saying between the lines. Because to hold any of those tenets as true, any one of them, systemic racism exists, white privilege exists, disparities in outcome are because of both of those. I mean, pick one. And you're already, you're already living in critical theory. You're already looking at life through that lens. And so why would you not be if you were a teacher or a curriculum developer or a member of a school board or any other person involved in education whatsoever? Why would you not be going into classrooms and teaching those beliefs? Especially if you are saying this is the only way to make progress. You almost would have to ask the person, why wouldn't you? So while they're telling you the stuff isn't there, they're also telling you it, it, it must be there. It should be there. And I think we know the casual perusal of social media will tell you that uh, an awful lot of people in some very high places do hold at least one of these tenets to be true. So they're teaching this stuff to children as young as six. We know this because they're living it. They're living it. You try to have a worldview and not teach something through that worldview. Good luck. Now, that doesn't mean that everything you teach through that worldview is going to turn out to be indoctrination. Because if your worldview is that enlightenment values are important, that equality of opportunity is important, that critical thinking is important, that integration and concept formation are important, that independence of thought and viewpoint diversity are important. If that is your worldview, as it is mine, you will not teach your personal opinions as fact because that would be the opposite of what you actually believe. In fact, you'll go out of your way to push your students to challenge your opinions. And that's if you even share your opinions because you'll be cognizant of the power differential between the two of you and the fact that you have a responsibility to remain neutral in the classroom to give the students as much space as possible to be independent thinkers. That's what you'll do. So your worldview does influence your teaching and not all worldviews lead to indoctrination because by definition, indoctrination is teaching in such a way that the student, the recipient of the information has no opportunity to form their own ideas. In fact, better they should be made to feel like that would be dangerous or evil. So they're disincentivized to do it. So they're not even secretly doing it. They're not just playing the game and you know walking the walk and talking the talk. They're actually living the life, thinking the thoughts. There's no cover-up going on. It's real. Because when you're in a position where you feel unsafe day after day after day to think anything other than what the teacher thinks and what your peers think, that's what happens. You start to think that way because that's the only way you can feel safe. So I guess what I'm saying is that it's absurd to think that schools would not be doing this. It's absurd for someone to demand that you prove that they are because we know as soon as they use the word identities and as soon as they use the word dismantle anywhere near the K-12 curriculum, they are teaching in critical pedagogy because it is not the school's job in an enlightenment worldview education system to even talk about a student's identities, to get that personal, to get under the hood, so to speak, of what's going on in their mind. And that is under the hood. That is not, you know, here's the subject matter. Here's how you learn it. Here are some skills. Here are some processes you can use to acquire knowledge. Uh, let's, let's look at how you are going to form concepts and help you do that. No, no, that's up here. They're going way down here, way before that would ever happen. 
they're trying to change the epistemology of the student at the neurological level early. They'd like to go to age three, but they're starting at six. So basically what they're doing when they make these demands of you is engaging in a kind of circular logic. They're saying, my conclusion is my premise and my premise is my conclusion. Disparity of outcomes proves that racism exists. Well, how do you know that racism exists? Because there's disparity of outcomes. That doesn't really work. And then you have the Kafka trap of, and if you deny it, that proves that you are also racist. How do you break into that? And how confusing is it for the student to be told any of these things? So do I really need to produce a specific lesson plan for you? Do I need to show you a specific school, a specific teacher, or the actual words critical pedagogy or critical race theory spoken by the teacher in the classroom in front of the students at all ages to know it's there? No, I don't. And nor does anyone who is coming to you in good faith. All they have to do is answer those questions of the, themselves and ask the questions of the teachers. And that's really easy to do because you can go to most schools' websites, you can type equity into the search box, and you could read the results. And you will see descriptions written in various ways, but all essentially affirming the tenets I've just laid out for you. Systemic racism exists. There is disparity of outcomes proves it. It is the job of the school and the students to dismantle that systemic oppression. The, it is the job of the teachers to teach the students to be anti-racist. They do that becoming, by becoming aware of race. Racial essentialism becomes very important. They have to be race conscious at all times. They have to identify and call out racism whenever and wherever they find it. It's presumed to be everywhere in every interaction with people of different races, especially if one of those people is white. And this is the primary value of the system of education because the primary goal is achieving equity. Not a specific standard of achievement for the individual, but equity of outcomes for all. That literally is critical pedagogy. When the system of education is pursuing equity above and beyond individual skill and knowledge attainment and achievement. That's what it is. So I'm done playing the gotcha game. Done. You come at me demanding specific receipts before you'll believe it after everything I've just said. And again, just go do a, a random internet search of any school district, look it up, look up equity and see what you find. I happen to know for a fact that every school district in this country by federal mandate must have an equity plan in place in order to get federal dollars. That has been the case since Barack Obama. It was actually the case before then, but it was made more explicit under Barack Obama. They all have one. So go look for yourself. It is not my job anymore to prove to you this exists. Instead, it is my job, I believe, to help parents understand how it manifests. Isn't that ironic? They're saying racism exists and now we have to show you where it manifests. It manifests everywhere. Projection is all they do. Everything they're saying about you is about them. Yes, racism does exist in every interaction in the classroom because the critical theorists are putting it there. It exists now. They placed it there so you can find it. They're just turning the world inside out so that you find the thing they want you to find and not what actually is, which is their racism. So my job is to help you see how that works and more importantly, much more importantly, to see how it hurts your children deprives them of a real education, deprives them of their mental health over time, not much time either, and will leave them permanently damaged if you do not intervene quickly enough. That is my goal. Also, I want to help you get out. I know it's not as easy as saying get out. I want to try to help you make that change for yourself and your family because I know it's not easy for everybody, but it is doable. And I personally consider, and I hope you will too at some point soon, that it is much more difficult to fix a broken child than it is to rearrange your life around ensuring they get a proper education, the one I believe they have a right to from birth.
not a right guaranteed by the government per se, unless you consider not getting in their way a right, which I do, and I do think public school gets in their way, but just a birthright as a human. We as parents owe them that much. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I hope you find this content helpful. If you do, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel and that you will also consider sharing this video with other parents and educators who are concerned about the directions our schools are taking. Thank you for watching.